I would now, uh, now like to invite uh, Mr. Ravi Parmar uh, on stage, please. Uh, he is an environmental and uh, finance specialist at NABARD. He is a highly motivated and result driven uh, team player with 11 years of work experience in project development and its cycle management, uh, covering, <laughs> covering various areas such as renewable energy, energy efficiency, energy transition, natural uh, resources conservation and its management. He's conducted environment and climate change impact, vulnerability risk assessment, project document or development appraisal, analysis of funding proposals, and its evaluation aligned with the requirements of India's and state's climate action plans. He's led the assessment of 40 plus climate adaptation and mitigation project proposals. He's carried out project site monitoring and I've done analysis of ground realities. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you, sir. I would also now uh, request uh, Mr. Carlos Albuquerque. He's the current uh, Senior Communications Manager at Decimal Foundation. At Decimal, he works with a dedicated team to scale the Breakfast Revolution project and helps build nation security across India through a holistic approach to fighting hunger and malnutrition. Welcome, sir. I would now request uh, the next speaker, uh, Mrs. Vipra Banerjee, our HOD of uh, Department of Media Communication and Development to kindly be on stage. Uh, she's completed her MPhil in Extension Education uh, with a certificate course in DTP and certificate course in Sound Recording and Reproduction. Her areas of specialization include photography, advertising, public relations, and extension education. She's uh, presented and published various papers in national and international journals. I would now like to request uh, Dr. Raj Bandari, member of National Millets Task Force, Government of India, to kindly chair the session. seen me so many times for the past two days that I guess uh, I would not have big bats thrown at me. <laughs> but, uh, the, uh, what uh, Mr. Sanjay Agarwal has done very craftily is that he's made food and nutrition system sound so simple and he's given us a ready reckoner to move along. And I think he simplified our job and his own job as well while he has uh, shared this wonderful document. Uh, the issues that were raised by Mr. Agarwal, I will base my discussion mostly on that with the panel members. The introduction is already there, so in the interest of time, I'll just jump to the questions. Uh, we face a humanitarian crisis and we are at the crossroads of, you know, with climate change, COVID, the triple burden of malnutrition and conflict. Conflict, you, you know, out of all these issues, it is the conflict, the war situation between uh, countries that has developed. So, at the same time, what we see is that there has been an epidemiological shift in our, you know, diseases that we used to face earlier. We used to face communicable diseases and now we face non-communicable diseases. So with the panel, I would want to know, while you are keeping sustainability at the core, how do you address the sustainable development goals? First to you, and if you can, because the core is sustainability, whether it be the food system, whether it be the climate change, whether it be poverty, hunger, all the SDG goals, how do you address this problem? Yes, sir. Thank you for the question. So, uh, sustainability in the context of millet, when you see the millet, 
uh, I want you to link it with three aspects that is people, planet and profit. So people, why people? Because it, it addresses nutritional aspects. Second for the planet, planet linked to sustainability because it is less resource intensive. I will just give you one example. If you are going millet, uh, you will require almost finite mm of rainfall. If you go for rice, it uh, uh, becomes twice 1000 mm of rainfall and if you go for the sugar cane, like 2000 mm of rainfall. So you can see, uh, uh, if, uh, if you consider the millet, almost 90% of the millet which has been cultivated uh, in India is rain fed. So it preserves the water which is a scarce, scarce resource. Uh, so it, uh, it basically what happens that natural resources is preserved and it accepts or it hosts the sustainability express like it leads to better health and well-being of the people it leads to nutrition and food security and other aspects uh, so and uh, other challenges so uh, why it is sustainable because uh, it can grow with less imports less agrochemicals so it is health, health, it is healthy towards the environment uh, it does not require uh, extensive uh, uh, drawing of water uh, it helps to build the soil organic carbon content and other things which foster the agro-biodiversity. So all these arenas, if you see, uh, research shows that almost out of uh, 17 sustainable development goals, it can cater to 12, it can help to meet 12 uh, SDGs. So this is the context wherein okay. the mint lies. Great, thank you. Carlos. Thank you. Uh, from a non-profit point of view, when we look at the SDGs or the sustainable development goals, we look at three very important ones. One is zero hunger, um, one is uh, climate action, and the third is um, economic growth. These three are interlinked, like my colleague here rightly said. Now, we talk about, like, let's, let's take today's newspaper for example. How many of you read today's newspaper? <laughs> Not a whole lot. Very involved in the program, excellent. <laughs> I, I got the opportunity to wake up a little late today, so I read the paper with my coffee. And the opening, the, the title article was Prime Minister Modi and talking about how we need to look at uh, food security for the next year. Are you all aware that there is a plan, uh, it's called 2047? If not, look it up. We're looking at independence and multiple factors, one of which is food, nutri uh, food and nutrition security. When we talk about millets and their role in climate change, uh, what month are we in at the moment? February. February. Towards the end, but still February. And what's the weather like outside already now in the sun? Already. You, you can see on my face and different shades of red already from the heat. Right? Climate change is very real. You don't need farmers to tell you. You yourselves can look out the window and see that now we have just one long season of summer. We have summer, summer with rain, mild summer. Right? That's our year in a nutshell. Maharashtra has seasonal drought. Our farmers are crying. Farmers are committing suicide. Water tables are falling. Right? We've had a very enlightened opening speech just now about all those concerns. Now millets, um, to cultivate millets you need 70% less water than rice. They grow in half the time of wheat. They can grow in temperature up to 64 degrees C, right? They grow, they are drought resistant. They can grow in land which typically does not allow other crops to grow, to, to be cultivated. So we talk about uh, diversity, we talk about security, these are the ways it comes in the long run. Granted, now we have to look at short term, making it popular so that it reaches down to the common man. But long term, these are the three goals we need to look at for sustainability. Good. Good. Thank you, Carlos. I believe uh, uh, you are talking about climate justice as well as making it an aspirational food for the masses. And what uh, Mr. Agarwal just said that it is in the upper wealth quantile that millet is being consumed. So uh, uh, we need to keep in mind how we make this as uh, an aspirational food for the masses. Um, as far as aspirational food for the masses is concerned, I would look at it uh, uh, in the context of sustainability, in the context of uh, making millets more popular because uh, 
you've talked about production, you've talked about issues that are related to production. I feel that um, in order to have a sustained, um, say, consumption, there are three very important factors. One is uh, the message, the second is marketing, and the third is management. The message uh, of millets, what millets are all about, uh, what, how they can be eaten, uh, what do they do to the nutrition and health of an individual and especially young people. I, uh, coming from the, uh, the academics college, uh, from the department, uh, I, I look at it how the young people can accept millets, uh, leaving aside uh, the refined flour that they are used to, having the kind of food that they are eating, how they will accept the millets. So therefore, the message has to go very clearly as to what they do for us. Uh, the second thing is marketing. I feel um, as far as uh, the millets are concerned, the branding, marketing, positioning is very important. We need to put the millets in such a way that they become very popular is part something that the government has to really take care of. We are talking about production of uh, millets and we are talking about that there are only few states in India which are really predominantly producing millets. Uh, I was reading somewhere that in Punjab uh, in the last year it was 2,500 acres of land which was under the cultivation of millets. This year they plan to increase it, rather double it to, to, to 5,000 acres. But the problem is that uh, the, uh, the refining of the, the millet crop or uh, what do you call that, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the right word is... Dehulling. Uh, Dehulling. De 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 and things like that are only few centers are available. There are, the, one of the farmers uh, from Gurdaspur said only three units were there for, uh, for all of this. And that too, they were private setups. So the government has to really do a lot in order to refine, in order to make that millet ready for consumption. So these are the three M's. I was also thinking, you know, I was reading this thing on uh, the seven sutras of the government. Right? Yeah, we will come to that in the next session. Okay, so we'll I think uh, this has to be, the message has to be very clearly given and along with the marketing strategy so that it becomes a sustainable uh, product for the youngsters, the right, acceptance right, of right. the uh, So, Vipra Banerjee, you very rightly summed up that we need to bring it to the masses by branding <coughs> and marketing uh, strategy. But that doesn't answer our basic fundamental issue as to how we can make it affordable. And why would the farmer grow millets when the farmer doesn't get a remunerative price? So again you rightly said that the government policy has to be in favour and maybe that we have to shift from arid and semi-arid zones to even irrigated lands where we are able to grow millets. So that disconnect between the demand and the supply I mean, you have the producers, you have the aggregators, you have the processors, and you have the consumers. So it's a long chain, and that disconnect has to be somewhere bridged. So uh, the what I feel is that climate change is for real. It is happening. Uh, the COP27 was basically discussing that uh, the, with the global warming, even the marine life would be affected. What they say is, you know, the, those phytoplanktons, the microalgae in the ocean, they provide 
60 to 70 percent of the oxygen that we need. So even a one degree rise in the temperature of the ocean is going to affect the marine life in a big way. So it is not only the desertification of land that we are talking about, it is the entire ecosystem which would mean the air, the, the marine, the, the land, all that would be. And we have seen that COVID really paused that emergency button in the sense that if the forests are being destroyed or burned or uh, uh, taken for graze lands, then human contact with animals would increase. And that, we believe, would be a very dangerous situation from a health perspective that you would get lots of diseases from animal to human being, the zoonotic diseases as we call them. So, what would be your prescription to, one was what Mr. Agarwal said that the soil health, you know, and I, as I said yesterday that one teaspoonful of soil would contain as many microbes as the entire population on the planet. If considering that we need to go organic because with organic soil you would have more of water retention in the soil and that is why government has pushed you know for uh, organic farming. What other measures do you think would prevent desertification because this is a growing concern and what we find is that by 2050 we would have 10 billion people to be fed and to your for your information and to anybody's surprise, the productivity will fall by 40%. If the productivity falls and the number of mouths you have to feed increases, then what would be a prescription that you would offer that how do we cope up with this emerging crisis or emergency or humanitarian crisis, whatever? For, uh, I think for preventing desertification, uh, mostly uh, government of India has come out with several policies like Parampara with Kishi Vikas Yojana for organic farming, regenerative agriculture and other aspects wherein uh, if you consider Punjab and Haryana belt wherein wheat has been harvested, so direct seeding of rice is happening. So that has stubborn stays and that soil, whatever organic matter is there or biomass is there, it again goes back to the soil. Right. So this can help to actually reduce the input cost in, in the form of fertilizer and pesticides and enhance the soil fertility. Uh, if we see at the all India level picture, almost about 32 percent of land area has been degraded uh, across 28 states. Out of uh, uh, out of 36 states in union territories, 28 states in union territories are facing some level of desertification or land degradation, uh, which uh, approximates to the area of 97.36 million hectares area. And uh, keeping in with a huge mouse to feed, which at present is estimated at 140 crore. Roof, uh, our main aim sh should be uh, mainly focused on natural farming aspects, uh, uh, improved varieties of uh, seeds and other aspects so that we get production productivity uh, at par with uh, the global standards as well as uh, which can help to retain the soil organic carbon as well as gives, gives us the kind of uh, uh, momentum or boost in the yield to uh, meet the food security and nutritional aspects of, uh, of our soil. So, Great. So, so that uh, millets are C4 crops and they help in sequestering carbon in the soil and uh, the minimal use of pesticides and fertilizers would certainly go a long way in improving our soil health. Carlos, any final comment from your side? As rightly pointed out, we have a few challenges ahead of us. A, we are number one when we talk about country population. You know, 1.4 billion people, but uh, when you look at it, it's not something to really cheer about. As we look at 2023, where a lot of the SDGs um, are aimed at, world population is estimated to be 8.4 billion people. And that 8.4 billion people and increasingly finite resources, you know? Resources are getting fewer and fewer, they're getting harder to obtain, they're getting more expensive to be attained. And 
these are very real concerns we need to look at when we talk about sustainability. Um, like you rightly said, millets help with soil diversity, they help reduce soil degradation. Like Dr. Bandari rightly said, C4 is an explosive crop, C4, you know. The way they, they uh, sequester carbon, they, they, they um, help us in terms of converting carbon dioxide better into oxygen. These are all things we need to look at. We need to improve acreage, we need to improve yield growth. In fact, um, the other day we were at a, a, a pulses conclave and IMR was presenting on things like uh, your processing machinery, uh, new yield, cro high yield crop varieties, seed varieties. And the government is taking measures. We need to give a little time, we need to get the word out to more people. And, and uh, to be a little cliche, I'm going to say team, you know, together we each achieve more. It's, it's a little cliche acronym, but together through these initiatives, through talking about it, to trying to see how we can get it over to the common man, that is how we truly make a difference. So, uh, great. Uh, Vipraji, I want to ask you, finally, we'll just, you know, with this we'll conclude the session, that, you know, there is a lot of buzz around plant-based foods. Now, this is, I mean, when we talk of climate actions, what are those actions? Because we do know that animal food, animal uh, uh, sourced uh, meat is a very great, uh, you know, it gives a lot of greenhouse gas emission like methane and all, a cow would emit a lot of methane and nitrous oxide also from other sources. So, there is growing interest in promoting plant-based foods because they help in restoring soil health also uh, 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 by regenerating uh, the carbon and other uh, organic compo compounds in the soil. Now, India is poised to, I mean this is what we think, uh, because we have a large landmass that we would be the food basket of the world. And we have proved it in terms of pharmacy that we could provide, uh, you know, a lot of uh, our scientists have done amazing work in, in food production also. We have the Honorable Prime Minister dedicated 17 hybrid crops and biofortified varieties of those crops which have a higher yield. So with more of yield, one of the things that we face with millets is the low yield. So uh, we feel that with higher yield we would be able to boost up our agricultural production and bring it to something like 70 to 20 percent of our GDP. Uh, now, what would be those one or two policy initiatives that you would recommend keeping our focus on the small and medium enterprises because they need to bring out certain technologies and also marketing and branding as you said for plant-based foods and uh, what would be that uh, unique selling proposition that we could attract you know young people and general population to uh, take that uh, sir you are starting with what is the policy initiative so i would just like to add there are a lot of things that the government is doing but one thing that came to my mind uh, uh, is uh, that uh, in the, the, the government has just launched Nutri Hub. Now, Nutri Hub is a collaboration between the Indian Institute of Millets Research in Hyderabad, along with the Tribal Cooperative Marketing Guide Institute, which is the
So that is what the government is doing. The second part is the, uh, the promotional part that you talked about. Uh, they have also, government of India has also come out with one slogan, Swast Thali Milit Bal. So I think such slogans, such campaigns, uh, which are focused towards young people, uh, because uh, we are, we need to understand, we know, I mean, everybody understands that uh, there are millennials, there are Gen Z population, which think in a way that uh, they understand the importance of health, they understand the importance of nutrition, they understand the, uh, the discriminatory practices that happen sometimes. Those are very the thinking uh, population. And so for that thinking population, if we present millets as an answer to health, as an answer to nutrition, I think they will really come forward and accept it right. and make it trendy make it trendy, make it uh, uh, available at uh, trendiest of the restaurants, cafes, um, do some kind of uh, uh, social media campaigns. I'm sure the youngsters will lap it up. Well, uh, that brings us to the end of the session and I would conclude by saying that what we believe is one planet and one health. This was a concept and now it's become a movement. The world over, we are talking that this is, you know, out of 4,000 uh, planets in the solar system, nine we all know, but there are many small planets and asteroids. You'll be surprised that it is only the Earth which where life, you know, survives. The others are either too close to the sun, so they cannot be alive, and the uh, rest would be too far away from the sun where it would be too cold. So in this system where we uh, think of our planetary health and unless everybody is safe, nobody is safe. You have to make sure that every person on the planet is safe and then only and COVID has taught us that lesson. And uh, I feel uh, this panel has done justice to uh, this, uh, 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 the task that you were handed for climate change and sustainability. Keeping this at the core, I would uh, thank you for, for your nice uh, words of wisdom. Thank you. Thank you all the panel members and sir for conducting such a wonderful panel discussion.